Hi everyone and welcome to the third part of the Endless Road tutorial. While the top tier patrons roll by, please let me welcome Samuel among them. If you want to support the channel while gaining access to some nice extras, then please check out the Patreon link down below. If you want to support the channel without monthly fees, there is a PayPal donate link down there as well. We are moving on from the first two parts of the tutorial, covering the verse and the chorus, to the first bridge section. In terms of technique, we are heading for a bit more of a traditional technique, still not that much hybrid picking that is needed, but you will be required to play a lot of bar chords and playing all of these things fluently while applying Tommy's tempo will probably still be a challenge for most of us. Enjoy the lesson. Okay, so let's get to work on part three of the tutorial. Now, as I already told you at the end of part two, you are ending up on the same lick as you play in the intro and then moving to an open low E string heading for an E power chord around the 7th fret. So open E string, index finger 7th fret on the A string, then two times the 9th fret with the ring finger and the pinky on the D and the G string and then two open strings on top of that chord. That is the chord you are heading for once you play or once you have played that intro lick. And that's quite, quite a quick position shift. Now let me first play the next section in full and then as always I will try to explain it to the best of my abilities. Here we go. the next section in full. Now there is a lot going on in here. Most of it is actually easier to play or easier to understand than what we saw in the first section when we did the sort of hybrid picking uh, combining with the strumming motion. This is easier to explain but it is difficult to play because of the high tempo Tommy picks. Now let's have a look at that intro section. So you're playing that E power chord, open string, 7th fret, 9th fret, 9th fret, and two open strings. And this section can be a bit disorienting because it's almost the, the, the top four strings are all the same notes. So if you play through that, I sometimes still get lost where I'm actually at with the plectrum because of those four identical sounding strings. This is really slowly how the picking pattern works. I think you can already imagine why it can get disorienting because whatever you do with the pick you go down and back up uh, through the strings and yet you always get those same sounding notes. So it can be a bit yeah, disorienting is, is, is the best word I, I can come up with. The picking pattern is all downstrokes until you reach the high E string. That one is played with an upstroke and then it's all upstrokes coming back. Basically the picking movement is I always use downstrokes when moving to a thinner string until I end up on the last note before I have to return to a thicker string. That one will be played with an upstroke and then I'll be using upstrokes in the other direction. So if I really um, count them out or, or explain them while I play. It is down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 up. One more time, a bit slower. Down, 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 up, 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 up. Down, 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 up, 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 up. So I'm basically starting with a downstroke on the low E string, all using downstrokes towards the high E string. The high E string is picked with an upward motion and then it's all upstrokes coming back in the same direction. You play this arpeggio two times in a row. It 
it's not really that hard in terms of technique or in terms of picking but as i said the, the fact that you are always getting those same two notes that b and that e on top that can really make it difficult to keep track of where you are with the plectrum but it's just a matter of practice and locking it in in terms of technique in terms of picking pattern on to the next few bars and we're basically just flattening down the bar with the index finger on the seventh fret going for a full E minor chord so heading from that E power chord index finger drops down middle finger is being added and you end up with a full E minor chord let me play the next bar really slowly and then that, last, that second time you have to play that high se seventh fret that high B note it's swapped out the index finger for the pinky so you can easily transition into the next chord Tommy mo picks most of these notes with the plectrum sometimes when I'm playing this section I, I add in the middle finger just because we're playing a hybrid picking song and it just feels natural at this point so Tommy is playing down down up down up And that last upstroke is going to help you again make the pick transition towards the bass string. If you pick that last note in a, uh, with a downstroke, you're actually moving farther away and you'll have to return to the bass strings to play that, that first bass note co that's coming up. So play this with an upstroke and it will actually make the plectrum move in the direction of the bass string. One more time. Down, down, up, down, up 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 adding in the ring finger on the sixth fret d sharp on the a string and laying a bar across the fourth fret across four strings spanning from the d string all the way to the high e string for a b chord with d sharp in the bass Swapping out the pinky on the 7th fret with the middle finger on the 5th fret, giving you a B dominant 7th sound. Again, with a D sharp in the bass. And again, I'm always picking the last note with an upstroke. Everything else is downstrokes. As you can see down below in the tablature, I've written two notes. Tommy often plays this with a light upstroke, giving you both the E string and the B string at the same time. But there are just as much occasions where, he just, where he's only playing that high A note and not necessarily including that B string. So it can go either way. So either you play just the high A note or you include the B string as well. open the E string moving to a little G chord triad middle finger fourth fret on the G string and a little bar across the third fret on the high B and E string little melody in first in triads moving up to a sixth interval so then hybrid picking plectrum middle finger and ring finger moving up two frets and then adding the ring finger and the pinky on the seventh fret i picked that using the plectrum and the ring finger because the ring finger is already on that string after those two chords so in full and then again to the pinky on the fifth fret and we're going for the exact same fingering as on the b over d sharp chord now to an a over c sharp chord just full disclosure, in the earlier versions of this song, Tommy plays a triplet. So in the more, more recent version he uploaded uh, on his YouTube channel, this is the rhythm. Three, four. Moving to the A chord. In the earlier versions he used to play a triplet. Three, four. Now I chose to transcribe or 
show you both versions in this case, but I chose to transcribe uh, the more recent version because this is a little bit easier to teach because in that way you get the same transfer from the E minor chord adding in the pinky and then the rest of the chord as you get down here going from the G part to just the pinky and then adding in the rest of the chord. If you want to pr play the triplet in the early ver like in the early versions, then you have to be a bit quicker for that upcoming A chord and play the top note and the bass note at the same time using hybrid picking. Transferring in this way, first the top note, then the bass note, and then the rest of the chord is just a little bit easier as it is quite similar to what we did in the previous bar with the uh, B chord over D sharp. Playing two times the same thing will make it uh, sink a bit faster into your fingers. So, exact same move from the pinky, swapping out for the middle finger on the third fret this time. So it's the same thing going from B over D sharp to B dominant seven over D sharp doing the exact same thing, going from A over C sharp to A dominant seven over C sharp. Moving the pinky to the B string, fifth fret. Moving the ring finger to the third fret, also on the B string. Hammering on with the pinky and then going for an open E string. So you're hammering on from the middle finger 3rd fret to the pinky, 5th fret on the E string, and then playing an open E string right after that, which is the same note. It's the exact same thing, but that open E string will give you just a second, a split second more to transfer into the next chord. First let me play everything what we have up until this point. Dropping down the ring finger one fret more down to the third fret, going for a C added ninth voicing. Now, first, just one more word about that A over C sharp voicing. This is not an easy chord, so you're coming down. So, that is not an easy chord to get down using the pinky and the middle finger while keeping down the ring finger and the index finger. And everything you play is straight eight notes. Each and every note is exact the same distance from each other. Three, four. And that is perhaps the easiest bar of the whole song up until this point, including parts one and two of the tutorial. You're keeping down that C added ninth voicing. I sometimes like to include the, uh, the, the second fret on the D string as well, just for some safety, but all you need is basically the ring finger on the third fret on the A string and the pinky third fret on the B string. Three, four. So, but that bar is just Exact same arpeggio two times, again only using an upstroke on the high E string. Up, down, 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 up. Moving to the second fret with the middle finger, giving you a G with a B in the bass this time. Three, four. Instead of going again for that open E string, we are now returning to an open G string. Three, four. Back to the, to the bass note. And then you're seeing some open strings. This is just Tommy again, really lightly strumming. Don't pay too much attention at how many strings. The first time it's two strings in my transcription. The second time it's three or maybe even four strings. Doesn't really matter that much. Just really light strum in between and then going for that last melody note again, just leaving down the pinky on the third fret. Three, four.
again the same C arpeggio so you go from C add at ninth to G over B back to C add at ninth only now you have on the very first beat of that bar you have to use hybrid picking using the plectrum and the middle finger to play the bass note and that high open E string at the same time three four also Pay special attention at how everything keeps ringing out. All those high open E strings, all those uh, B notes with the pinky on the third fret, everything keeps ringing out. As you end up on that last open uh, high E string, Tommy uses the thumb to play a bass line on the low E string from an open string to the first fret to the second fret. But there really isn't a specific reason, I think, for using uh, the thumb over the side of the neck. Uh, it probably just feels very natural for Tommy to do this, but you can actually just as well play this with the index finger. I even think it's a little bit easier. So what Tommy plays is this. Going for the thumb and then adding in the ring finger on the third fret of the G string using hybrid picking, plectrum and the middle finger on the high E string. adding in the index finger and then ultimately going for a B dominant seventh chord with a flat nine. We'll address that just in a second. So again, the fingering Tommy plays. And you can just as well play this. You're using the exact same fingers up top as you did while fingering the chord with the thumb and you're not changing anything. It's, it sounds exactly the same. That was with the thumb, now with the index finger. The exact same thing, now the single difference. Ending up on a B, as I already said, a B dominant chord with a flat nine. Hybrid picking on the very first two notes, bass note and top note at the same time, and then just arpeggiating all the way down through the chord. One, two, and then back to an open E string and we're heading into the second part of, uh, let's call it this uh, verse, um, with a few small variations. Uh, first, let me play everything we have up until this point slowly so you can get a good second look and then I'll explain the next section. Here we go, from the top. part is basically the same thing with a few very small variations starting right away on that E minor chord. Just a triplet on top. And then you do have to pick that top note and that bass note of that B over D sharp chord at the same time using hybrid picking. So the E minor chord Hybrid picking plectrum, and I use the ring finger in this case for the top note at the same time. And then Tommy adds a really quick variation, which isn't easy to do. This is already for most people, this will be a stretch on its own, and then really quickly moving up that, that uh, pinky to the eighth fret for that embellishment. Is, that isn't easy. What does help is you don't have to play the full bar at this time and it, in my experience it really helps to make that bar as small as possible so now you only need three strings instead of four strings and using those three strings really helps for that stretch in the plectrum. Now again there are versions where Tommy doesn't play this fill where he just plays which leaves that, that, that little shift up to the 8th fret. It, it's gone altogether and he just plays just 
a small variation on, on the same arpeggio, but I thought it would be neat just to include that one fill as well. Because that is probably what most people or a lot of people are used to hearing. Back from that uh, E minor chord, second time around. Same fingering, open D string, G triad, moving to up two frets, to an A triad, two, that sixth interval, and again with the pinky to the fifth fret, but the rhythm is different this time. It's all played in between the beats, so only the bass note on the first beat. One, two, three, four, one. So each of those little triads or intervals is played in between the beats. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then on the first beat, that bass note of that A chord will land as it did in the exact same spot in the first time we played the verse. Let me play what we have up until now, back to back, and I'm going to continue playing up until the next variation. Everything after those first few fills is the exact same thing as I told you before, that little strum over when you use that G over B chord. One time it's two strings, the other time it's three strings, so don't mind that too much. But now we're ending up on a part that I actually can't play myself. Tommy goes after that section. open E string and then Tommy goes for a B flat chord. He uses this fingering, middle finger, ring finger, pinky on the third fret on the D, G and B strings, index finger, first fret on the high E string and then he uses his thumb to fret the B flat note on the first fret of the A string. Now I can just barely manage it like this or hardly manage it. So that's the chord. And then Tommy pulls off. So that's what he does. Now I have large hands and this feels nearly impossible to me. There are two options. A thing that I first thought out as an alternative was just using a bar at the first fret, using hybrid picking on the very first two notes, the bass note and the top note, and then lifting up the bar and using the plectrum all upstrokes to play that open string. In his original fingering, Tommy plays a pull-off on the first fret. If you use a bar, that pull-off on top isn't possible. So that's what I did, just hybrid picking and then an upstroke on the open E string as you lift up the bar. Upstroke, upstroke, upstroke. Playing the same arpeggio as Tommy does, but he does it with the thumb over the side of the neck. Let me give it one more try. So that's what he plays with the thumb over the side of the neck and a pull off on top. Now the pull off is the only thing we have to sacrifice if we play it with the bar like this. So hybrid picking, the first note, upstroke, 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 and then just a few loose strums on that same B flat chord before transferring to the next bar. There is a second option I thought of uh, just uh, right before starting the recording of this tutorial, and it's similar to what he currently does in the latest version he uploaded on his YouTube channel, is playing a rake with a plectrum. So just the same fingering, Tommy does play it with the thumb over the side of the neck, but it's actually possible or, or even easier to do, I think, with a bar. Just dragging down the plectrum and doing, doing the same thing, down with the plectrum, upstroke on the open string, and then the same thing, upstroke, 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 and those few strums at the end of the bar. Just one more thing I quickly want to add. If you're going for that rake option, 
you're probably going to have to leave out that last open E string. That open E string probably has to go, otherwise it's, it's going to be really complicated to get straight back down for that, to, to put that rake into action in the right manner. So what I usually do when I play that rake is I just leave out that last open string. Those are your options. So either you have massive hands, as someone recently on the YouTube channel called it, shuffle hands. So thumb over the side of the neck on the A string. Playing it like this. Or you use the bar at the first fret using hybrid picking. That's your second option. Or the rake going down. That rake actually negates the hardest part about the, the previous option using hybrid picking and then jumping with the plectrum all the way down to the open E string. That jump is quite fast from the bass string using hybrid picking to the upstroke on the high E string. If you use the rake going down, the plectrum just moves to where it has to be. Upstroke up. It just, that last one feels like a really elegant solution and it's very similar to what Tommy plays in his most recent version on YouTube. He still uses the thumb but he uses that rake going down and when I saw that I immediately realized that that might actually be the best solution to that part if you don't know or it is impossible for you to use the thumb. And in this case for me I wouldn't risk uh, using the thumb in that part, it would probably sound, uh, it would probably give a buzzing string sound more than half of the time. So I'm sticking to this option in this case. So that's also what you'll uh, see me use throughout the tutorial from now on. Just three chords left going for an A, uh, sorry, an F major seventh chord with an A in the bass, so no low E string, to a G chord. No top E string, the chord uh, is limited to the, the top note is the B string, third fret of the B string, and then Tommy goes for thumb over the side of the neck, second fret with the index finger and the ring finger going for a D over F sharp chord, but again your uh, middle finger is doing nothing at this point, so you could just as well play it like this. So if you're not a fan of using the thumb over the side of the neck, then you can avoid it in this section altogether. So Tommy's fingering is this. Always with a light tap in between the chords. One, two, three, four, one. And Tommy just leaves this one ringing out. And as he explains in his uh, True Fire uh, tutorial video, he doesn't even really count out the, 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 the bars in this case. He just plays the chord, he lets it sustain, and then whenever he feels like it, he starts the next section. First, let me play that last section uh, with the B flat chord, back to back with some of the earlier parts, and then we're almost done for this section. Let's have a quick look. Three, four. From there on, it's into the repeat of this section. And the good news is it's a full repeat, no changes whatsoever. But first I'm going to play this part uh, all the way back to front, really slowly. And then I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit for the next section. Here we go, one time, back to front. Thank you. 
was the first section in full. Now the second section is the exact same thing. Only the transfer, no, now I think of it, the transfer to the next part is also exactly the same thing, that same chord section. So that leaves me with the opportunity to just pick up the pace a little bit, just a little bit faster, not full concert speed, so you can get a sense of what it sounds once you pick up the tempo just a little. There is only one single change. That first uh, bar. So that opening section with all those uh, identical sounding notes is back, but this, this time it's only two bars instead of four bars. So instead of repeating that arpeggio two times, you'll only play it once. And I forgot to mention, Tommy uses a, a typical technique, he does it in, in a lot of songs, he's just placing the plectrum on the top string and then really lightly dragging across to get a reverse arpeggio on the first beat. And then straight away into the same picking pattern. So really lightly, just strumming up and the difficult part is getting locked into that picking pattern straight away again. If it feels difficult then just leave out that reverse arpeggio and just start picking it again right away. next first chord of the next part sorry but that is something for part four of the tutorial in the meantime get this all into your fingers and i'll see you again next week bye bye